Hi everybody, Rusty here for Motorsport Australia. We're going to catch up with another legend of both the domestic and international scene as we gradually move our way out of the COVID-19 crisis and get back to motorsport. We want to check in and see what some of these people have been up to and what they're planning to do as the year and the, the back end of uh, season 2020 is reshaped in, uh, in many ways. We're joined today by a guy who is a legend of Fink. Uh, part of the folklore of Dakar, winner on multiple occasions of both, and it's great to catch up with him. Tubby Price, how are you? Good, thanks, mate. How are you doing? How have you been coping? Mate, it's uh, it's definitely it's a different world at the moment. It's um, very, very quiet. I've uh, I've actually spent a lot of time in Australia, which is unusual. Um, I'm always uh, jet setting, going somewhere around the world. So it's um, yeah, it's quite a crazy time. We've uh, been trying to learn some new skills in the workshop and. Um, yeah, I now appreciate my mechanics uh, so much more because, um, yeah, it's not, not, not an easy job keeping up the task of uh, motorcycle stuff to me, so it's good times. Just let people know what your schedule was looking like for the year because I would imagine it's been completely upended. Yeah, 100%. It's, um, it's definitely come to a complete stop. So uh, it's a different world for me at the moment. Um, pretty much, I think it was already by April, I'd already flown around the world just over two times so um it's uh yeah it's crazy and then to basically just all of a sudden just the carpet get ripped out from underneath you and say that yep, there's no more and um yeah i've been twiddling my thumbs a little bit at the workshop but uh i've definitely got a lot of tasks here that keeps me busy but um look yeah i had my five rounds of world championship that we had to compete in um they've all come to a stop at the moment they're still trying to toy with the idea of uh, october november for two rounds of the world championship uh, but that's not certain and not a guarantee yet because, yeah, around the world, the, uh, the restrictions haven't been quite lifted. But uh, then again, yeah, we've got to try and see if we can get organised and ready for Dakar in January 2021. So it's, um, yeah, this year is going to feel like it's a, a blur and it goes very quickly and um, I feel like we, we'll be straight back on the line at Dakar, hopefully. We wanted to protect the beautiful community, the people of Fink, so understandably that race uh, had to be cancelled this year. Uh, how gutted were you when that happened? Because you clearly had your sights set on the double, didn't you? Yeah, 100%. It's, um, it was a tough one with Fink getting cancelled because, um, yeah, we, we, we've invested a lot of time and, uh, and also a lot of money, like everybody does, to go to that event. Um, but yeah, for sure, it's to to have uh, the safety of the community and stuff out there. It's um yeah, we've got to got to protect the, uh, the the families and people out there and um, in Aptula and um, look after them. And it's uh, yeah, it's a shame. But um, we had a brand new trophy truck getting built um, in the states uh, through Tisco, and then um, yeah, we were aiming to go back for the double again to try and see if we can uh, tick that box, which has um, eluded me a little bit the last uh, couple of times I've tried. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Look, maybe 2021 is where it's going to happen. Where's we talking to you? You're at the workshop. Have you been tinkering? What are you doing there? Yeah, mate. It's um, Yeah, you're more than welcome to come here and uh, tinker <laughs> along with me. So if you're good with uh, welding and stuff, mate, uh, it's good. Like, I've been working on a, on a four-seat Can-Am, which was also getting organised for Fink, um, to just to go and have some fun with like family and friends. Um, so I'm trying to get my fabrication skills up a little bit with welding and um, trying to learn some TIG welding. Um, it doesn't look pretty, but it will hold, I'll tell you that, so it's all right. Um, I've got a new semi-trailer that we've been working on, fitting out and everything, which was for the trophy truck to cart it for transport out to Fink. Um, so we're just fitting that out at the moment, um, working on bikes. Now that restrictions have been lifted a little bit, we've been able to get out and do some riding and stuff. So it's it, it's getting better. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm very keen to get out of the workshop and, um, yeah, go and do the normal old things. So it's uh, we've got a lot on our plate. We're keeping busy and it's, yeah, good times. You mentioned Can-Am. There was a plan in the midst of, of your schedule to go to the United States and do some stuff with them. Is that correct? Yeah, it's correct. Um, yeah, we've got a good relationship, a good partnership with Can-Am here in Australia and uh, and globally. Um, we yeah, we we're trying to have a toy with the idea to go and maybe do the UTV World Championship um, races over in the states, and um, yeah, uh, maybe even like a, a Baja thing as well. So uh, it's it, there's always something going on um, behind closed doors and uh, trying to yeah um, sneak our way into some more races in four wheels, but. Uh, yeah, like once our two-wheel schedule kicks off again, um, that's that's main priority and where we're at. And uh, we've still got a, I reckon we've still got another four, maybe five good years up our sleeve on two wheels um, to try and get a couple more Dakar wins. But uh, 
the future goal and plan is to go into some four wheel racing um, in Dakar and uh, do the do the likes of Stefan Petter Hansel and um, and things like that. So it would be would be pretty cool. I'm glad you use him as your benchmark because you're obviously in that because you still have things you clearly want to do on two wheels, but it's about preparation for that ultimately for four wheels, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. That's it. Um, a lot of people at the moment kind of give me a little bit of slack about um, being on the four wheels and stuff like that. But uh, look, the the four wheel program stuff, it doesn't come easy. Um, it, nothing ever comes easy in life, really, that's for sure. But it's uh, four wheel stuff. There's a, a lot of guys that can drive cars and a lot of, and there's not very many seats available. And it's the, exactly the same thing as a motorcycle. So um, I didn't just land on uh, on a, a Dakar ride um, overnight um, and and things like that. So it is a it's a four or five year plan away really. So it's I'm just trying to start on it a little early um, just to get that driving time under my belt. Um, any bit of experience is going to help, and uh, we go from there. But it's um, like I say, it's it's still probably a four or five year plan away. Um, but it's just going to be good to be able to rock up and um, put a helmet on and actually know where the start button is in the car and um, take off and drive it so it's uh, you don't have to have a crash course, which I'm trying to learn in the simulator world at the moment. I'm trying to get that a crash course in about 10 minutes, so it's uh, and uh, I'm well above my head in that stuff. So it's it's been entertaining, a bit of fun, um, but we're, we're just working on things in, in the future as well. Let's talk a fraction more about that. Uh, it was great to see you as a part of the Supercars <laughs> E-Series. It probably didn't go the way that you wanted it yeah. to, I know. A twofold question, are you planning to do a little bit more of that? And is Bathurst somewhere on the bucket list? The real deal Bathurst, I mean. 100%, mate. That's, um, yeah, the, the, the real deal race would be uh, another one on the bucket list for sure to do. So, uh, yeah, the, the simulator race didn't go quite the plan for us. Um, I made it entertaining. I um, I laid my roof for about two laps and uh, the boys were losing it, laughing at me and whatnot. But uh, for how wild it was, I was hoping someone would just, because everyone seemed to be having big crashes in the first turn. So I was like, surely someone will make a big mistake, come wide and hit me and then put me back on my wheels and I keep going. But um, where, because when you press escape, you get kicked out of the out of the actual race. you got to sit in the pits for a little bit. So I was like, oh, well. I'll just make it entertaining and sit on my roof for a bit. But, um, yeah, look, I've, uh, I've been stirring up Chad Reed a little bit. Um, I'm saying, sure. hey, like, <laughs> <laughs> hey we, need to, we need to see if we can get into the real deal game at um, Bathurst 1000 one year. And, um, yeah, so it's uh, uh, along the way you always just got to, yeah, have a little bit of trash talk and a bit of, bit of fun with it. But uh, it was it was a good, good fun event. And uh, I've now got my own simulator at the shop. So I've, uh, I've been practicing at night and stuff so i'm getting ready for my next one whenever, whenever i get that call up hopefully roland dane will give me a call up and i'll be ready to go that's a wild card combo we would love to see chad reed and toby price and to join the <laughs> likes of uh of daryl Beatty and troy bayless and wayne gardner and other two-wheel stars who've competed at the mountain while we're focused on what's happening in oz and the fact that that borders are kind of keeping you here which in in a nice way we love does that mean you're thinking about more side-by-side -side competition, more stadium truck competition, just to sort of keep yourself occupied as we gradually start to do more things down under? Yeah, for sure, 100%. It's, it's uh, at the moment, like, yeah, my, my, my two-wheel program, um, uh, we really don't know when the, the next event is going to be for that. Like I say, it's more so towards the end of the year, but um, that, that relies on a world global scale. Um, if people can't compete and can't leave their country, um, then that's the event won't go ahead and won't go to plan. So, uh, look, yeah, I'm I'm looking to try and do some more stuff here in Australia now, which is which is cool. Like I'm, yeah, I'm s stranded inside the Australian borders, but uh, honestly, there's no better place to be than than Australia, really. So it's uh, I'm I'm, ha I'm happy I grew up here. I'm happy I'm uh, an Aussie. Um, yeah, got the mullet to go with it, mate. So it works <laughs> great. And um, yeah, representing well, but uh, yeah, we're just. Got to, got to try and find some other events. But for sure, stadium trucks and stuff, if they kick off again, um, Can-Am races, uh, the side-by-side -side championship and things like that, as long as everything permits and nothing clashes with uh, uh, the two-wheel side of things, um, yeah, we, we usually jump in every weekend to go and do something fun. Rallying. You were spotted at the Australian Rally Champ or the World Rally Championship event in Oz in 2017. Would you ever consider doing a little something like that for fun? And are you any good as a co-driver? No, no, not as a co-driver. I'm not a co-driver. Not one little bit. I, I, I did that the first couple of times in the trophy truck just to go, yeah, okay, yeah, I don't mind it, not too bad. But then after I got behind the wheel and then realised how much 
you're not really in control sometimes. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm never letting anyone uh, have my life in their hands again. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I went and spotted uh, a little bit at WRC here in, um, in Australia and, uh, yeah, look, it was quite a crazy world. I've actually got to go and drive a WRC car, yes, yeah, so, uh, Sebastian Loeb. Um, I went with, for a couple of laps with him and uh, I went out first, was driving. I'm like, yeah, sweet, I think I might be able to have a go at this. Hey, sign me up for WRC. I'm coming for it. <laughs> and then... Then he jumped in the car and then I think I was like, you know, basically a five kilometre straight stretch. I was like about 45 seconds off his time and I was like, I was in here passenger seat with him. I was like, yeah, I can trust him. He, he knows what he's doing. I'm okay. If I don't get in the car with him, I'm a little bit mad. And um, some of the stuff that he was doing with the car, I was just like, it's just not possible. Like a car can fly like that or steer like that and go around some of them turns. And then when you got trees whipping by you, it's a, it's a different world, but Hey, you never know. If someone just said, "Here's a WRC car, you want to go race?" I'll, I'll sign up, mate. I'll go. I'll go for it as long as I don't get the damage bill. I'll be happy. We know you love that extreme stuff. Great work. Hey, on your social media, which you've been very active uh, on during this period, we note a couple of things. Firstly, um, uh, some great merch that you've got at the moment. If fans want to get hold of some, yeah, it's it. Um, it's it, it's giving me some more time to do do things like that at the moment. So uh, we've just re- released some more merchandise and stuff on my website at tp87.com.au um, so anything that uh, yeah, the fans want to get a hold of they go through the website it's there and available and um, so no it's, it's good it's uh, I'm, I'm very lucky I've got a great fan base here in Australia and um, very uh, very appreciative of that and it's uh, it's cool to see that everyone jumps on board and um, loves to see what I'm doing so it's uh, trying to keep the fans engaged um, yeah you don't want to put too much out there that it uh, feels like they're just jamming some content in their face but you want it to be entertaining as well, and um, yes, yeah, at the end of the day, yeah, I'm a bit of a bit of a redneck, mate, with the, the long hair, so I'm I'm pretty good. So I have a bit of fun. Lastly, um, the ironic positive for you, probably in this whole COVID nineteen period, is that that the downtime, the rest, has I would imagine been quite good for your body. You're one of the toughest guys I know, and it's taken its toll over time, hasn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. Look, honestly, you'd say like three, four months ago. Um, yeah, I was just pretty much burning at the end of the end of my uh, end of my week, really. Um, and then, like, look, you just get to the point where you get used to being feeling like that, and it's like it's you just go, oh, that's just how the body is. It's how I feel, and how it's like the way it's going to run for the rest of my life. And uh, now that we've had this two to three months off and been in lockdown, and we can't really go out and do anything, um, I'm actually starting to feel like yeah, I'm a little bit more energized and uh, realizing it. Yeah, okay, maybe I was just going a little bit overboard sometimes but <laughs> i'm one of them people mate if something comes up i don't like to say no um i like to try and jump in and have a go at it and uh yeah you never know when those chances will come up and if they'll ever come up again so you you try and grab them every time you can but it's uh it's nice it actually feels good my body feels like a little bit like normal now so uh the the training and everything like mountain biking and stuff i love mountain biking and i've been out doing that at the moment and it's it, it's so much more enjoyable. It's uh, I'm not in pain really, so it's uh, you're definitely in pain by the end of it. But um, yeah, just the, the joints and the soreness is uh, kind of gone, which is nice. Great to catch up. Uh, get back to that welder. Uh, look forward to seeing you competing locally, doing something in the short term and long term. Getting back to tackling and hopefully winning another Dakar and certainly achieving that ambition of the double at Fink. Mate, appreciate it. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, anyone needs some, uh, a little bit of dodgy welding done, come around to the shop, no problem. So <laughs> I promise you all hold, but it won't be looking pretty. So yeah, we're good. Appreciate it, mate. Great to chat. And um, yeah, everyone keep safe and we'll, uh, we'll see everyone back at the racetrack soon. There he is, Toby Price. Fantastic to catch up with him. A reminder that as we start to come out of this COVID-19 period, motorsport is happening again and grassroots is very much leading the way. We saw that in Western Australia recently. For a state-by-state breakdown of what's happening in terms of events near you, go to the website motorsport.org.au and we'll be back with another star of the motorsport scene in the near future.